Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about developing in a live environment. So I've had a lot of people ask me, do you develop in a live environment or you do a testing like a dev area, development staging area? We do both and it all depends on where we're at with the project. Um, typically, I've worked with clients for many years and we don't leave a dev site up because when you leave a dev site up, you start getting into, um, did I update this on the dev site or did I update this on the live site? And if it's something that needs to be done quickly, you want to do it in a live environment so that um, it, it gets done right away. You don't have to do it in a dev area and then upload it and change it and do you know so a lot of times i'll edit in a live environment um, there's a lot of risk in doing that because you can shut down the website if you have um, code in there that's not correct one one little apostrophe somewhere or semicolon not right or something like that and it can shut down the entire site so i want to show you what i do whenever i'm editing on a live environment or coding on a live, live environment. And it helps me out a whole lot to be able to see some debugging stuff and, um, and it just help me get through what I need to do. All right, so let's get started. So here on our um, ideapro.io site that we do testing and stuff like that on, um, we have our development environment open. This is the functions.php file in our themes folder. And then we have the uh, default index.php file open up for um, the default page, which is what's used here on the front page of ideapro.io. All right. So what I do is right here at the top of functions.php. And I do this because if I need to change the IP address because we're going to do it based on the IP address. If I need to change the IP address, it's at the top of the functions.php page and it's really easy to find. Now you can also do this in a plugin, um, but I typically just do it in the functions.php page if it's a theme that we've developed, which typically if it's one that we're working on, it's one we've developed. So, but you can do it as a plugin and it works just the same. So right here at the top of the functions, function, uh, functions.php page, we're gonna create a function and we're gonna call it is developer, all right? And then in here, we need to know our IP address for our, where we're at, whether it's um, you're at home or in an office or at Starbucks, wherever you're at, you need to know your IP address. And you can go to Google and do, what is my IPv4 address? Because we're gonna do this based on an IPv4 address. So you go to Google, you get your IPv4 address, and then you put it in here. You can also do a, a print R of the server. So if you do like this, in on a page somewhere, it will tell you what the remote address is. And that's what we're going to be looking for, right? So get your IP address and then you say if, yeah, if server remote ADDR is equal to, and then we're going to enter in my IP address, 778.265. That's not right. 78.201.18.95. All right, so if server remote, um, server remote ADDR is equal to, and then your IP address, we're gonna return true, else return false. All right, so now we can go to this page, our index.php page or our template file or whatever page you're working on. And we can go in here and we can put in some code right here, right? So let's do a, hi, I am Joshua, right? All right, so now we have, hi, I am Joshua. That shows, that shows up for everyone everywhere. 
it's public, it's going to show up. So if we're doing something where, let's say, we want to see the post, don't do that to me. Let's say we want to see the post details of the post that we're on, right? So we could do a print array dollar sign post. Let me go back here and refresh. So now what it's going to do is it's going to give us um, an array of the object, the post object, which is the the title, the content, the post author, all the details of this post. Now, if someone comes to the website while we're working on it like this, it's gonna look really bad. And they're gonna go, oh, there's something wrong with your website. They're gonna call your customer and be like, oh, there's something wrong with your website. So we don't want them to be able to see this if we're looking for, you know, what is the ping status or what is the post name, right? What is that actual variable called? Or in this case, it's a, it's a property of an object, right? So if we write some code where we're like, oh, let's print out print dollar sign post, and we're going to do post name. This is incorrect because this is a, this is calling it as an array and it's an object. So if we come back here and we refresh the page, it's not going to give us what we're looking for. And if we've got debugging turned on, it's actually going to give us an error, right? So this is not going to work. The correct way for this to work is post name as it's an object, right? So we can go like this and we can come down here and now we have home down here underneath. Okay. So, but we don't want this to show to anyone other than ourselves. So right above this, we're going to say if is developer, developer, there we go. If is developer, and we're going to wrap this around this if statement. We're going to encase this with the if statement. So now, is if developer is developer, that's basically saying if it's a, the developer IP address, we're going to return true, else return false, right? So now, if we do this and we come back here and we refresh, it's still going to show us because we're in we're the developer, right? So I'm going to turn off my VPN because I do everything on a VPN. All right, now I'm off my VPN and I come back here and I refresh the page and it's gone. So to the public, that code is now missing and you can do what you need to do in that development area. And then once you're done, you can just remove these tags and remove whatever you know you're doing to uh, as far as debugging wise to make this go live hope this video helps you guys um, answers the question to developing in live mode um, or a live site yes i do depending on the project if it's a really big site sometimes i don't sometimes i have a development area that we do testing and stuff and then we push it push it live so like this video, remember to subscribe, click the bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next video.